It's another math day here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time, I'll be showing to you how to construct probability distribution out from responses of your respondents. So let's say, for example, we have here the given data. Most probably, these are the um, scores might be. So if you are to ask, or if you will be asked to construct a probability distribution out from the given data below, then you are going to try to consider at least what will be the lowest possible score there be and the highest possible score. And you are going to count how many are with that possible scores. Or you are going to get their frequency. That's a number of times. Uh, the appearance of the particular value is. Now, if there will be more than 30 um, data, you can make use of an Excel. There will be tutorials on how to do that one under the Excel. So kindly view that one in a separate video. So this time, I have here an arranged data already, so which is like this. So in order for me to construct my probability distribution, I must know first what will be my or how many times my values are appearing on this data. So we'll start off with 14 and then we go for 16. So we are literally counting that off. So here is now the corresponding values of your X and the corresponding frequency. So based on the data there, we have 14, that is only one. So we have one under frequency and for 16, we have only one as well. So that is why we have one. For 17, we have one, two, three. So that is why we have three. For 18, we have one. 19 and 20, we have one. For 21, because I listed it down, all those possible numbers that I can have there for me to check whatever is going to be the value or the frequency of each of the values within the range 14 to 37. So I don't have a uh, 21 here. So this is for those who would want to do it manually without making use of the Excel. You can do it like this, but if you are going to do it on the Excel as well, you will be listing down the in-between numbers of your ranges. So that is why we will have here most likely values in between that will have no frequency at all. So that's why you're getting a zero there. So for 22, we don't have 22 as well. And for 23, we don't have that one here. But for 24, we have one. For 25, we have two. For 26, we don't have that one. So 27, we have one. For 28, we have one. But for 29, we don't have. So for 30, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 4. 31, we don't have. 32, that's only 1. So we have 33, 1, 2, 3, 4, so we have 4 on that one. For 34, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 4. And then we have 35, 1, 2, so that's a 2. And then we have 36, that is with 1. And 37, we only have one. So that is how you try to count the frequency of each of the values on the data. Now, when you are going to construct your discrete probability distribution, all you have to do is to consider only those with frequency. So that is why this will be now the resulting table with my X values here. So those who getting a frequency of zero will be eliminated. So that means to say 21 is not part of the values of our random variable and also 22, 23, 26, 29, 31. So we only have 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, 25, 27, 28, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. Now to construct the distribution here, Given that this is now our table with the frequency, so we will be constructing different table containing X and the P of X. Now for the probability, by the way, P of X is the probability of the appearance of your um, X values or the probability of you getting that particular X value there. So we have 14 as the first one. Since our frequency is one, 
that means our numerator and the probability there will be 1. And then our denominator, since the data a while ago presented is 30 items, so that means to say that we will have here over 30. So again, the data there is 30. So you have there 30 scores. So your denominator here will become 30. So your probability there is 1 out of 30. So you may convert that 1 into decimal. So 1 divided by 30, that will be equal to 0 0.033. You can have that 1 as the value. Or you may have this fraction here. Next one for number 16, we have frequency of 1. So we have that as 1 over 30. For 17, we have frequency of 3. So we have that one as 3 over 30. Now do not mind reducing that one. Because again, later on after this one, we'll be checking that one if the sum of our probabilities here will be equal to 1. Because if that will not be equal to 1 or if it exceeds 1, then that means we have something wrong along the counting of our frequency. So let us have this one here. Number 18, we have 1. So that will be 1 out of 30. And then we have 19, we have 1. So we have 1 out of 30 as the probability here. For 20, we have 1. 1 out of 30. Then for 24, frequency here is 1, so we have 1 out of 30 under probability. For 25, we have 2, so that will be 2 out of 30. Again, do not bother reducing that 1. So for 27, we have 1 out of 30. For 28, we have 1 out of 30. For 30, we have 4 out of 30. For 32, we have 1 out of 30. And we have 4 here out of 30. And for 34, we have 4 out of 30. For 35, we have 2 out of 30. And for 36, we have 1 out of 30. And lastly, we have 37. That's 1 out of 30. So that is now how you construct your probability distribution for discrete random variable. So again, all you have to do is to know the frequency, how many times your values appear on that particular data. So you have to count that one and you get your probability there based on the frequency or the number of appearance of your value there on the data over the total number of data. So I hope that's clear everyone. And I hope you learned something from me today. So if you liked the video, kindly like, share, and subscribe for more videos.